I'll, I'll get into this more on Sunday, but I had a, a bunch of resistance I had to break through, and I made a decision, and that decision literally um, has started to transform my life over the last year, really, but I made a decision, and in that decision that I made, and I'll tell the story on Sunday, I met Naveen. And Naveen shared something from stage at, at a seminar I was at, and there, there's a lot to go into that again. I'll, I'll probably share that on Sunday. But I, what Naveen shared literally brought me to tears. Um, Helen's going to speak on it more on Sunday, um, one of his new moonshots. But Naveen is a billionaire, and he does that by making billionaire, fixing billionaire type problems, right? He doesn't look at life like we do at times. I just want to achieve the million dollar practice. If I could only achieve that. Naveen doesn't even understand what that means. He looks at helping and serving the individual like you also do, right? So you can see the difference. When you focus there, big things happen. And Naveen, um, I was literally in tears when he was sharing about Viome. And well, I hope we can discuss that today. Um, I'd love to interview that. But uh, with, the neat thing was is, you know, you meet a guy like this and you see the influence he has and the connections that he's hanging out with Dr. Oz and on Branson's Island and, and doing all that stuff. It's like, what, why would you, what would he want to do with a, why would he want to talk to a guy like me, which is a major area of resistance. We'll talk about that on Sunday. Why? why, why? But then when you really think about it, people that change the world, go after people that really have a heart and want to make a difference like you and even like me. And when I texted him, I didn't think he was going to text me back, but he, he's, he texts back faster than even my wife. Um, when, and I, I can't even believe that. So for him to be here tonight is literally um, something very, very special um, to me. I believe to you, he flew out here, he canceled another, he can speak anywhere he wants in the world and he canceled another trip just to be here tonight to meet with you. So give him a big hand for being here. <laughs> let's get right after it. Um, do, you have some, let's, do you have any questions you'd wanna ask you know, uh, someone like this that has accomplished, you know, the things that, that he has um, in his life. Does there anyone in the, in the crowd that has a question? Daniel, you have a question. Your biggest accomplishment, what has you? I think that's the easiest one, I think. Uh, the biggest accomplishment that I personally believe you have had is really three wonderful children. And to some extent, any which way I look at it, um, <laughs> It is not about what I do. It's not about leaving the better world for our children. It's really leaving the better children for our world. And that's really how you live your life. Come on. <clears throat> um, you know, uh, if I can brag, I mean, the, there are very few things I'm going to talk about what I do. But I think when it comes to our children, that I think we have a fundamental birthright to brag about our children. So I'm going to do that. Um, you know, I have three children, three wonderful children. Um, one of them is 26 year old, and when he was 17 year old, he started something called Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, Kairos Society, which is now the world's largest college entrepreneurship nonprofit. He brings together just last week, 500 college entrepreneurs from 100 different countries, and he had 150 top CEOs that you can possibly imagine were there to help these kids. And he does it because that's how you change the society by creating the innovation and entrepreneurship. So the belief is really simple. There is no problem that's big enough that innovation and entrepreneurship can't solve. And here's the thing, doing good and doing well are not mutually exclusive. If you want to make a billion dollar, all you have to do is find a problem that helps billion people. And if you can do that, you can create a $10 billion company. And in fact, I can tell you that, it doesn't take any more energy to do something small than to do something big. In fact, it is so much easier when you attack a problem that has a purpose. Something so audacious, something so big, when you tell someone what you are about to do, they think you are absolutely crazy. When you tell someone what you're going to do, and if they don't tell you it's crazy, you're not thinking big enough. If you happen to be crazy, then all bets are off. Right? But 
Honestly, there is nothing that you absolutely can't achieve when you set your mind to it. One of the things that I learned from Warren is that the only reason we don't do something, the resistance that Warren talks about is because we, are not, we don't have a purpose in life. That our purpose is too small. When you come up with a big purpose, all your resistance goes away because it's not about you anymore. It's about that big goal you have. And once you set your eyes on that big goal, then every single hurdle in your way it starts to look like a tiny speed bump. And here's the best part. The people around you in the world will come together to make your dream come true. And that is what I found. When you come up with a goal that this is what you set out to do, it's amazing to see the world's best resources are attracted by the same purpose. And they will quit what they are doing to come join you in making that happen. The resources, the money from around the world will come to you to make that dream happen. Because if it's your dream that can help a billion people, there are at least enough people out there who want to help those billion people. And that's how you change the world. How many people believe that? <laughs> how many people believe that, right? I believe that, 100%. Another question. Go ahead. I believe that. You have a, you've got to have a question. I got a question. I knew you would. So, uh, your world changes. once you have that strong enough why, and you have a target that you're going for because you want to you change the world, what is the step-by-step -step process that you follow hmm? to creating that and implementing it to, to create that yeah. dream come so, true? Yeah, so basically the question is, yes, you can have a moonshot. Then how do you actually go down and start implementing to make it happen? So, yes, you need to dream really big. And when you start executing, you take a small slice of it and you start executing on a small slice of it. And you keep taking the next slice and the next slice. And next thing you know, the whole dream is starting to come together. So it's not about boiling the ocean the first day. It's about taking a problem that is towards that goal and constantly stepping stone one step at a time and you keep moving forward. Because now you have the North Star, you have the direction, you have the purpose. And even if you fail in achieving the destination, you move the humanity forward. It doesn't matter even if you can't reach the goal you're trying to do, you move the humanity forward far enough that someone else will come along in the relay, take that from you, and move that forward further along. So if you can't reach that, at least you make an impression enough that there'll be 10 other people who'll take that stick from you and move forward and make sure that before you, you get to live to see that goal that you set out to do. That's powerful. Um, any other questions before I want I have a couple I know I want to ask Naveen specifically, but go ahead. Yes. That's a great question. Yeah, so the reason I came to, if I got to know. Well, the question was, yeah. um, why, why did, did wh to, yeah, go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, why did, why did Naveen choose to be here instead of somewhere else? I like that question. Honestly, the reason for that was uh, the purpose that Warren has, his sincere desire to help the people. That to me was the really the driving reason. He did not come in and say, come here, we can make a lot of money. There here are a lot of people who have a lot of things that you, they can help you do what you want. He said, I want to make a difference. I want to help lots of people. I have suffered and I don't want anyone else to suffer. And I want the learnings that we have had to go out and spread that message to everyone in the world. And if you can help me do that, we can help a billion people around the world. And I said, Warren, I'll be there. Yeah, he, it, was, it was such a sweet, I mean, Think about it, you know, if you would talk to someone like Naveen, I mean, where he's, he's speaking the Vogue, all these things, and you call him on the phone and you're like, Naveen, would you, would you like to come to our event? You know, and he's like, absolutely, Warren, with love in his heart, with compassion, Warren, any way I can help you, anything I can do for you, and I'm just being blown away, right? But it just, it resonated, it was just like the universe was telling me, Warren, you got to think bigger. Your mission, 
with, with what we're doing here with Dr. Pompa. Dr. Pompa talked about this, right, at the beginning of the event, didn't he? He mentioned we're, we have something that's special and we're going to go for it. And then when you do the right thing, it was just confirmation to me that someone like Naveen would come alongside us and literally share his heart, his evening, his time away from his family, away from the things that make him money to be here with us tonight. So I, it, just, it really was re really a confirmation for me. Thank you, Warren. I mean, I'm really glad to be here. And I just want to share a couple of stories and really in terms of having you start to see about how you go out and do things. So I want to just maybe take a step back and give you the journey of my own life and tell you about the things that I'm currently doing and what is so exciting about what is going on. I grew up in India and we really were very, very poor. We didn't have a food to eat, eat and we didn't have to be poor be and it's because my dad decided that he wants to take no bribe. And in India, if you don't take any bribe and you work for government, then you really make no money. And so we grew up with absolutely no food. We moved from village to village every six, nine months, and we didn't have any place we called home. Um, you know, we sat on the floor. There were no schools in these villages. We sat on the floor, and we wrote on the floor, and we studied. My sister went on to become a postdoctorate in applied mathematics. My brother had a PhD in computer science and statistics, and I was the least educated person in my family with engineering from IIT and did my MBA. Uh, came to the United States with $5 in my pocket and then to speak the language. And it was an amazing experience of how society embraced you and really gave you everything. God has been absolutely kind to us in every which way we look at it, whether it is uh, financially or a wonderful children that have grown up in this country. Forgot to tell you about two other children, so I'm going to get back because I don't want to miss them out. I don't want you to think that I'm only proud of one of them. <laughs> so our middle, actually our middle uh, our kid is our daughter, who is just graduated from Stanford. She is a Stanford STEM fellow, Stanford Mayfield fellow. She's on the board of Stanford Women in Business. And she's a UN ambassador for women empowerment and women education. And she just graduated and joined a neuroscience company uh, for women empowerment. Yeah. Uh, she just did a TED talk too, right? Yeah, she just actually, just last week, uh, we were at TED. And Chris Anderson asked her to do a short TED talk on the main TED stage. I mean, that's how proud you can be of that, right? Um, and our youngest one is a, currently a sophomore at Stanford, and he is just one smart kid. He's already starting to look to start several companies, and I told him when you're in college, you don't start companies, you learn, right? And that's my rule is that there is no such thing as dropping out and starting a company. Opportunities never go away. Education is a plan B of life. Never, ever shortchange it. Learn as much as you can, because once you learn something, no one can take that away from you. Money can be, you can lose money. You can never lose knowledge. It only grows. Surround yourself with people who are positive, who encourage you. Get rid of anyone who laughs at your ambitions. Get rid of anyone who is negative around you. You don't need any negative energy around you. So anyone who laughs at you, oh God, you can never do that. You, you know what? Just tell them, I don't need you in my life. Right, seriously. Because greatest dreams are done. Do you know the best place if you want to find the greatest ideas? There is only one place you find the greatest ideas that have never been implemented. It's a place called graveyard. Right. <laughs> This is the people where the ideas, people had great ideas, but were so fearful, so afraid to go out and go execute on them, they died with those great ideas. And those, that's where the, all the great ideas died. Don't be one of them. Let's take those ideas. Let's go out and make it happen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So uh, just to inspire you um, about a moonshot, let's, let's talk about one of your first huge moonshots in uh, Moon Express, sure. and then let's get to the one that we're going to get to learn about too, called Vaya. So, um, one of my company is actually doing the moonshot. It's a company called Moon Express. And believe it or not, we, we are the only company in the universe that has a permission to leave Earth orbit and land on the moon. 
So you hear about Elon Musk and you hear about Jeb Bezos and my friend Richard Branson. All these guys are going to the space. They are all stuck in the low earth orbit. <laughs> right? If I may say so, underachievers. <laughs> True. Right? <laughs> Uh, we are actually going to land on the moon this year, right? So we've been building this thing and the oh, first, so here's the best part. When we land on the moon, not only we become the first private company to ever do so, we become the fourth superpower. And that's really what I was going to talk to you about today was entrepreneurs becoming the next superpowers. Because I believe that every one of us has everything at our disposal, whether it is technology, whether it's resources, to solve the big problems. And let me give you the four reasons why I believe the entrepreneurs are going to be the next superpowers, not the countries, not the state. Number one is for the first time in the human history, there's so much innovation that's happening that's going to disrupt every industry. I believe in the next 15 years, half of the Fortune 500 companies will die. That means king is dying. Every one of you can become the next king. We all, every one of us, now have the technology at our disposal to solve the biggest societal challenges. The things that used to be the things that countries solved. Space, defense, education, healthcare, Every one of these things are going to be solved by an entrepreneur and there will be someone in this room. You and I or anyone can now, a small group of people can go out and land on the moon. Number two, the entrepreneur can really be held accountable every single day, unlike every election cycle. What happens, you elect an idiot, you're stuck with that idiot. True. Right? If you think I'm talking about our president, you just may be right. <laughs> Number three, the good thing is with this global thing that everybody hates, when you are an entrepreneur, there are no, global, there are no national boundaries. You go wherever the best resources are. So when we started Moon Express, we couldn't find the rocket cheap enough. We went to New Zealand and bought the rocket for $4 million. The cost of going to the moon came down to under $10 million. The same mission that cost NASA 50 years ago $25 billion. In today's dollar, that will be $100 billion. And we're doing that for $10 million. So think about that. How technology is changing everything. Wow. And the fourth thing is the risk money. Money comes to those who create opportunities. Capital is not patriotic. Capital goes where the opportunities are. And that's what happened. When we set out the goal to land on the moon to become the first company, this couple people came and asked me, why should I be investing in something like this? And my answer was really simple. Every one of you have a chance to watch the history being made. You rarely get a chance to come and make the history together. This is your chance to sit down with me and be part of Moon Express and make the history together or watch on the sideline and make me and watch me do it. And most people say, I would rather join you than watch you do it. That's a great takeaway. <laughs> Use that in your consults. All right. So anyway, so now uh, the thing that we're going to talk about really is that as I was, you know, now we are about to land on the moon, we're going to go in, going out this year. I start thinking about what would be our next moon shot. And I start thinking about there were two big things I wanted to solve, education and healthcare. And it turns out both of them were identical problems. Both of them are not working. People believe both of them are broken. Turns out neither one of them is broken. They're doing exactly what they were designed to do. The difference is our needs have completely changed now. So they are not fulfilling our need, but they're not broken. For example, education system was designed to teach you skills and you could learn those skills and use them for the rest of your life and everything was wonderful and suddenly the technology came along that means everything every skill we learn becomes obsolete every five to ten years and what do we have the chronic unemployment 
The jobs that we used to do are no longer needed. Our skills are no longer needed. And suddenly we have unemployment. It's exactly the same thing that's happening in the healthcare. Our healthcare system was designed in the 20th century when we were dying from infectious diseases. We were dying from infection, so what we did? We created the antibiotics, and when you are sick, you go to the hospital, and, and, and they take care of you, you come back, and life was good. What do we have now? We have chronic diseases. What's a chronic disease? You're always sick. The healthcare system wasn't designed for that. And here is the irony of the situation. The cure for the infectious diseases is what caused the inf chronic diseases, right? So I was going to talk to you. So as I start to look at the stuff, it became so obvious what we have been missing. And as I started to learn about it, it just became the thing, let me tell you what the thing that surprised me the most. So I'm not the doctor, I'm not the scientist, but I, I do play one on TV. <laughs> right? So here's what happened. I did not realize everyone tells you we are product of our genes, right? It's all in the genes. It turns out, Less, when you look at the genes that are expressed in our body, less than 1% comes from our DNA. Our DNA only produces 19,000 genes. You know where the rest of them come from, right? The mic, no, not the bacteria. Close, but not good. It is the microorganisms in our gut. And when people think of the microorganism, they always think they are bacteria. They're just one part of that. And that is where the people have been going wrong. So people started to take seriously something called microbiome, right? You heard of it all, right? How many yeah. people heard of microbiome? How many of you have done the microbiome test? That is what I call the waste of money, right? So what happens is today's microbiome tests are completely a snake oil. Here's what they do. So companies like Ubiome and others, what they do is they simply, they have a, a technology called 16S. So for basically it's a gene in the bacteria that they sequence. And when they do, they can only see about 50 to 70% of the bacteria only at a genus level. So what's a genus level? Here's how the genus level works. You say, Naveen, you come from India. Can you tell me what India is like at a genus level? And I'll say, well, there are some men, there are some women, there are some children, some are young, some are old. That's the genus level for you. And you say, well, that's just like America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. That's what happens. So when you look at the microbiome of two people at a genus level, 95% is the same between any two people. And that's complete waste. When I was looking at it, I was at a Los Alamos National Lab. You know what that's famous for? Atomic bomb. That's where they developed the atomic bomb. These guys know how to kill people. Right? They were obviously, as you can imagine, looking at the next, pop, next problem, biological bombs. <laughs> right? right? If you're gonna kill someone, you might as well wipe out the whole humanity. <laughs> then they started to worry about what happens if some bad actor had a biological bomb and it just went off. How would we know What's making us sick, right? They couldn't do what we do today. Doc, my stomach hurts. Oh, you got a stomach flu. But doc, I'm also coughing a lot. Oh, you got pneumonia. No, doc, my head has been pounding. Oh, you got a brain tumor. <laughs> like, they have no idea. <laughs> like, they just make a guess and they test for things. What these guys had to figure out very quickly was, can they look inside your body, the bodily fluid, and find out everything that's going on? Every single organism. It didn't have to be bacteria, it could have been a virus. It could have been a DNA virus, it could have been an RNA virus. It could have been a parasite, it could have been a fungus, it could have been a yeast, it could have been a mold. They look at everything. But that wasn't good enough because even if you know what is there, you couldn't do much with it. They wanted to know what is it doing. So they started to look at RNA. Our DNA tells you what could potentially happen. RNA tells you what is exactly going on right now. So they look at every RNA in your body to find out what is going on. And by the way, if it is a bacteria, what is it resistant to? What antibiotics is gonna work and what is not going to work? And that is the technology when I saw that and I said, oh my God, if we know what is making people sick, why can't we just use that to keep people healthy? 
And that technology I licensed from them and we brought it as a company called Wyom. And our goal is really simple. I am sick and tired of this healthcare system. And let me tell you the thing that absolutely the straw that broke the camel's back here. I was at a health event. There were about 35 CEOs from the large pharma companies, the hospitals, and that medical diagnostic company. And here the Warren conversation went. They wrote down the crisis of healthcare, and they want to write down all the stakeholders. They said the stakeholders are doctors, hospital, insurance company, employers, and FDA. I listened to that bullshit for about 20 minutes, and I raised my hand, and I said, sir, what about thy stakeholder? Which stakeholder are you concerned with? The patient. You know what they told me? Patient is not a stakeholder. And you know, I say, why? Patient does not pay. It is based on who pays. Patient does not pay, he's not a stakeholder. And it occurred to me that healthcare system has become an organism where the Darwinian theory is the only thing that applies. The survival of the organism is all they care about. They don't care about the purpose, what they set out to do, which was to cure the patient. And that's when I decided, pardon my French, fuck the system. Come on. Yeah. And so we said, what if we can keep everyone healthy? at a cost that everyone could afford. Instead of paying $1,000 or $1,500 a month for the insurance premium, what if we could bring the cost down so much that we can do $99 a month and test everyone, not once, not twice, not three times, four times a year, and make sure they stay healthy. And if we can do that, you know what will happen? The doctors will go out of business. The hospitals will go out of business. The insurance company will go out of business. And that's how we're gonna implode the damn system. Now you know why I was crying the first time I met Naveen. Right. So my hope is, the reason I'm here is that there are many people here who can help make me do this. I can't get to the billion people by myself. What I want is each one of you to be part of that journey. Each one of you to become that ambassador, to go out and take that message and make everyone healthy. Because no one ever should be sick. So here's the thing when you go to the Wyoming, here's the first thing we say. What is my moonshot? My moonshot is to create a world where chronic illness is a matter of choice, not a matter of bad luck. Because there's no reason for anyone to have a chronic disease. Remember, unlike infections, chronic disease doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. Nobody gets Parkinson's disease today and didn't have it yesterday. Nobody gets cancer today, didn't have it yesterday. Nobody gets diabetes today, didn't have it yesterday. It takes five, 10, 15, 20 years. And the thing that I'm really excited about is, in the last five years, every single day I see the research that shows the gut microorganism is largely responsible for every chronic disease. So just tell you, today, we found three bacterial species that cause asthma. We found the thing that actually, the three bacterial bacteria that cause autism, and I can't even pronounce their names, is actually is in the autismspeaks.org, and you can check it. They found the people who have autism and people who don't, siblings, the same DNA. There are three specific bacteria that cause that. We found the things that are um, celiac disease, it is actually it's very interesting. People talk about gluten-free and the low carb and low protein. Pardon my French, I mean, there are a lot of people here who believe there is a magic bullet, there is a magic diet that we can all go on and life will be wonderful. There is no such thing. So anyone who's telling you that is selling you a snake oil. There is no one diet that's right for everyone. So here's a very interesting one, that thing that happened to me personally. I was, I'm trying to lose 10 pounds and I have my glucose is just pre-diabetic. I went on and I was told that carbs are bad for you. I'm listening to Dr. Perlmutter, love him, but he says gluten is evil. So I cut all the gluten off, I'm cutting all the starch off. All I'm eating is, I'm a vegetarian. Lentils, legumes, beans, tofu, and vegetables. That's all I'm eating. 
not going, weight is not going down, my glucose is not beating down. I start to cut the quantity. I am down to a point where I could starve to death. I'm telling my wife, I can't do anything anymore. I could kill myself. That's the only way to cure this thing. I, the death cures every disease. <laughs> True. Uh, couldn't figure it out. Finally, as soon as the YM launched, I was the first guinea pig, did the test. Very interesting. Turns out my body does not digest protein well, it digests the carbohydrates well. And the minute I started eating complex carbohydrates, I lost two pounds and my blood glucose went down. That variation. That variation. Here's a very interesting thing that I learned. It suddenly occurred to me, the last 10 generations of my family, they grew up in northern India. You know what they eat there? Wheat. Everything is wheat. There is nothing that my body and my microbiome that came from my mom was designed for wheat. And I was completely avoiding it. So either it was a diet variation that I don't know, or went back to the, my diet that my ancestors were eating. Uh, and your ancestors may be eating completely different diet. And that's the thing that worked for me. So idea here is, can we find out for each person what is that personalized diet? And even if you find out what's right for you today, it will change every three months. So what we do, we test every three months. Changes. Every three months we test again to see what's right for you now. And then we test you again to see what's right for you. And idea is that we not only learn about what's going on, we're adding a bunch of new things to it, which really I am so excited, is because the thing that nobody has ever looked for. So we're starting to do this stool transcriptome, which transcriptome means really the RNA analysis. Nobody has done that for the blood, and we're just adding that in the next 60 days. Here's what happens when you do blood transcriptome. You look at every single, single mitochondrial genes. You know about mitochondria. How many of you know the mitochondria used to be a bacteria? Right? So the mitochondria really was an ancient bacteria that got captured by our cell. It has 17 genes. We look at all of them. We know exactly what mitochondria is doing then we look at every single transcript in your blood to see how your body is responding to the gut bacteria because the gut and host reaction, right? Uh, we are the host, right? Trillions of these guests in our body and when we are a bad host, they make us sick, right? When we are a good host, they keep us healthy. But we need to see the interaction. We look at what's causing inflammation. When you change your diet, are the, is the inflammation going down or is inflammation going up? Right? Because all the chronic diseases are fundamentally the inflammatory diseases. But I mean, I'm not here to preach you about the why of. What I'm trying to say is, what if we can take control ourselves? What if we don't have to rely on this system, the system that's out there to simply make money from us? Pharmaceutical companies, they love chronic diseases. They love chronic diseases. Imagine, they don't want you to die because when you die, your credit card stops working. They hate that, <laughs> right? And they don't want you to get cured because you stop buying their product. They love it. You got autoimmune diseases? Let's not cure that one. Let's just suppress the immune system. What are you going to do? Just keep on my drug all the time, <laughs> right? They love the thing. You got the acid reflux? Let's put you on a Nexium. So whatever acid you have, let's block it without realizing the acid reflex happens when you have too little acid, now you got too much acid. So let's, cure, let's do something that will keep you sick all the time. Let's just suppress the symptoms so you don't feel it, right? And that system needs to change. And the only way it is gonna change is when every one of you in this room is gonna make a pledge that we are going to go out, not only stay ourselves healthy, but I'm going to take this message to everyone we know, our patient, our neighbor, the, our children, our family, and make sure they stay healthy. And once we can get rid of this stupid system, we can create a new system where you and I and the patient is at the center of the universe, not only not a stakeholder, they are the stakeholder. Right? That's it. Come on. Well, we've run out of time. I just want to thank Naveen thank you. Um, for being here. Uh, we're going to have more. Helen, your, your, uh, your so chief Helen medical Messier officer, is going to be. Is she here? 
Helen, are you here? She's speaking on Sunday, so doctors. Do Dr. Helen Messi at the back. Yep, and then our platinums, she, they're gonna, platinums are going to get some one-on-one -on -one time with her as well, because we're going to be testing this technology within, within our platinum group, and then we're going to roll it out. Uh, if you want to try it, uh, people that showed up t tonight, some of the public, some of the students, there's a little thing in, in your bag, and you could be, you know, um, start that with us. But in reality, do you think Naveen's crazy enough to change the world? <laughs> More importantly, so, do you believe in yourself is crazy enough to change the world? I promise to you, you let me help me solve the problem for the healthcare. I promise you, I will go next thing I'm going to fix the education. So, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen.